But tonight, Paula Mayweeks, the fire belongs to you. Let me start and tell you why, Paula Mayweeks. Because you're a bully. Paula Mayweeks, you are a disgusting bully. Because you use your throne, your bully pulpit, and use decades of centuries of convention and parliamentary behavior and decorum in order to stand there in the parliament. How ironic. Where you could give your speech and no one could retort. No one could reply. Just like those that you sat next to. The presiding officers who constantly thwart the minority. Thwart the opposition. Stymie motions of interest, of public import, of national interest. You stood there on your bully pulpit. While all the media and the entire country was listening, knowing full well that nobody could question you, nobody could argue with you, nobody could debate your whatever you presented or the concepts that you have in your warped mind. You are a bully lady. But let me tell you something. Bully only for a time. Because you can't bully the Dogla and Dogla politics. So here it is. Come down from there in your purple dress, Madam President, with your fake accent and your fake intellect and your fake ethics and your fake position and your fallacious attitude, your hypocrisy, and you are a total disgrace to the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm going to go through in detail why you are the worst human being who has ever held the office of president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. You used and you climbed on the backs of former presidents like Noor Hassan Ali, man of class, impeccable Trinity to the bone, a man without a divisive cell in his body, a man who loved his country and was patriotic, upheld the constitution and the law every moment, held himself above the fray. You stood on his back to bully parliamentarians, to attack people wrongfully, to give your hypo hypocritic speech, throne speech, as if you are some czar. Well, you are no czar. You are a disgrace, a disgrace to scholarship winners, a disgrace to women in Trinidad and Tobago. You are a disgrace to judges, to lawyers, to all presidents who came before. You, my lady, are a total disgrace to all patriotic citizens who love this country. Who the hell are you? To tell me about patriotism. The only time you feel you patriotic is when you get Rowley to appoint you as president and you get special branch and drive wrong in fancy car and go in a special plantation house and they call you president and everybody ball your excellency. That is when you get patriotic. What the hell you ever do for Trinidad before that? You're a judge, they pay you. You lecture you wouldn't, you get salary. I suffer and put my heart and soul for this country for free, whether as an athlete, a swimmer, a, a footballer, and a coach, never getting a cent from the government, having created Olympic champions, Olympic medalists, world, world record holders, and children who moved on to be great representatives and ambassadors for this country over a 35-year period. And you, you could tell me about patriotism, woman, hold your tail. You're fast and out of place. Who are you? What are you? And what have you done? And in the short stint that you have been there, you have dragged the flag from the highest to the lowest. You've dragged it through the gutter and dumped it in the latrine by your, your disrespect of the constitution, your inability to separate your friendship and your personal relations from the job and the office that you have. You have divided this country along with Rowley and you come to preach to us. You come to bully us. I and all had to stop, but I'm sorry, I shouldn't have stopped David Nackett from walking out on you. Because the convention, the respect, the, the normal feelings that we had 
been taught over the years manifested itself in my discipline that even though you were making the most hypocritical idiotic speech and god green earth that i was the whole discipline i had to sit there i had to stop my colleague from walking out even though it was the most drivel that we have ever heard from a woman who has no standing whatsoever to preach to anyone i thought of my mother in that time Yes, and you would know my mother, Patricia Antoinette Roberts, the lady in the sari, the lawyer who, before when you were a lawyer and a law student, you would have had some interaction with, and then when you were a high court judge, you would have interacted with her. She would have been so ashamed of you to know that you who knows full well inside and out the Constitution, that you who breached it, you could stand there and dictate to others who had broken no law who had not breached the constitution, who had not misbehaved in public office, who had not shown partisan politics when you are in a position to be above the fray. You dive down in the political gael to jump in as a PNM, as a bishop's tea party, and have the audacity to use your bully pulpit to bully people who are serving their country and serving their constituents in a manner that is unbecoming, unresearched, puerile simplistic and idiotic the most idiotic speech i've ever heard i didn't know one human being could talk so much nonsense in 16 minutes and this was foretold you know dinish rambali foretold this because before you made that speech dinish rambali on dogla politics on saturday two and a half days before you open your mouth to embarrass yourself this is what he said remind them archie I have nothing against the president personally. I likewise, I'm sure I'm confident in saying the same thing for you. I congratulate and commend. I, I know she's coming to the ceremonial opening on Monday to address parliamentarians. But I want to say to the public and to Her Excellency, true citizens, what you have done here, you are commended on this occasion of putting out a release with expedition, with alacrity, to ensure that that nonsense that the Attorney General said that go check the president and go and talk to Ramesh, that that was dispelled outright. If, Anil, if that kind of alacrity and diligence was displayed by the head of state, Her Excellency, Ms. Paula May Weeks, on the occasion of when the Prime Minister went to your office and interfered with that list from the Police Service Commission, this country would not have that kind of crime rate that we are experiencing now. We would have had a substantive commissioner in that position and we would have had some kind of leadership of the police force. Ma'am, you failed miserably on that occasion and I will justify that time and time again. If that kind of alacrity that we see now, which I commend you for, was initiated or injected when Prime Minister Rowley went and interfered with that Lissanil, we would be seeing a lower crime rate here. Well, I would... So... That's Dinesh Rambali and each and every one of you who have known me. I've been on radio since 1997, on TV since 2004, and a minister from 2010 to 2014, August. And I've been a senator, UNC senator, activist, Dogla politics right here. You all know that I don't ever bring a president into any discussion. You all know that I leave the president because whether correctly rightly or wrongfully i believe stupidly in the in the conventions in the office in the respect but when these people come now and they have desecrated the flag desecrated the the office and trampled on the memories of those who sat in this position i it hurts me but i have to because i will not be bullied by a hypocritical woman who took the constitution crumpled it up with keith christopher rowley stamped on it danced on it with her muddy shoes and spat on it i will not sit there and take that fire burn you woman you out of place you out of order you are a disgrace people deserve better yes paula may weeks they don't deserve you miss bishop's tea party give tnt hope yes you give us hope resign because you dragged the flag
stop your selfishness. Eh? Uh-huh. Selfish? I don't know about them. But when all the blood, sweat, and tears that I put for my country help and to assist the amount of people across the board, whether in sport, in coaching, in charity, as a MP, as a minister, as a senator, working and trying to help people without anything, without any thank you, without any praise. You who sit down and drink tea, eat scones, and your budgetary, your diet alone is more, it could feed about 20 people per day. The amount of food and things they spend on you, the gas you just burn with all the, the, the big cars burning and zooming all over the place. 118 million to refurbish a plantation house. Everything you have a function, it's thousands and thousands of dollars. And you talking about other people selfish? Woman, check your fast self. Well, let's go through it now. If you feel I done with you, lady, I go in clearly, cogently, slowly. And this is her speech. This is her entire speech as printed in the newspaper. So let's start. Address delivered by Paula May Weeks, president, at the op- ceremonial opening of the third session. Number one, she said, Parliament exists for the primary purpose of making laws for the peace, order, and good government of Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, it does. And the Constitution exists, which originally came, the Republican Constitution, which created the Office of President, was created to ensure that all other laws, all institutions, come from that document, the sacred Constitution. And Section 123.4 of that Constitution states that the President shall, on receipt of a merit list, in order to ensure, the concept was, in order to ensure the independence of the police service the separation of powers natural justice the justice system and democracy that the ttps the police service must remain independent so the framers of the constitution put in section 123 4 because a president is supposed to be impartial above the partisan fray and not influenced by any politician why because a society and a democracy depends on justice fairness equity and the applications of laws and the people or the person who's in charge of the of the service who implements and has the power to arrest and take away take away the freedoms of others is the commissioner of police that's why the constitution created the entire independent police service commission that you went and 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 appoint your friend and them who you went to school with and who was also on pnm board simultaneously you did that creating the conditions that were rife for the abuse of the constitution by keith rowley and by you forcing bliss Sipasad to withdraw a list that was duly legally and legitimately after hours a merit list you lady took merit and threw it in the toilet upholding partisan politics friendships and relationships because you thwarted the constitution the concept the convention the idea of the constitution the idea of democracy back in 1961 before we were a republican constitution when we had our first constitution the one element in marlborough house that the colonial powers did not give the pnm was the ability to appoint and control the police service because back then in 1961 they knew about the importance of an independent police service but not you you allowed rowley to influence you you knew better than anybody in this country that section 123 4 said that once you receive that list you shall shall you have no discretion no time no delay no question no investigative power no ability to thwart or change you shall send it to the parliament but you allowed this miscreant 
this land date, this renaissance, this Greenville, this email gate liar to come and shoo shoo in your ears, influence you against what you knew was right. You got involved in partisan politics. You were biased and you were influenced by this man. And you told your friend who you had appointed, who had the chairmanship of the police service commission because of her relationship with you at bishops, you told her to withdraw the list illegally, illegitimately, wrongfully, and you had admitted that in your statement from the office of the president and you come to tell me and to tell other parliamentarians that we must uphold the law and we kicks in if we kicks in what are you doing because we didn't breach any constitutional arrangement we did not ensure that the pnm and the politicians could control the police service we did not ensure that a man who did not even apply and the last time that he applied for the job finished sixth is now holding the job we didn't do that we did not take merit and throw it away you did ma'am you are disgusting and you stand there to try to bully people because you have the protection of your throne speech fire burn you you're a total flipping disgrace